Okay, let's uh, let's get going. Welcome back. So question from Talia: Is the quiz that TMR on Thursday? Uh, yes, so that is, so quiz will be on Thursday. Yes, that is correct. So um, I, I'll make an announcement uh, either today or tomorrow about, about the logistics of the quiz. So it will be essentially the um, you'll work. It will be the same format. You'll work on the quiz for one hour. Um, whenever it's convenient in the 24 hour window. Uh, and yeah, so you'll need to upload this uh, using the using the courses. And which chapter will it cover? So it will cover chapter 12, uh, the topic of the sec uh, second week. Yeah. Right, so like uh, each week we have quiz on topic which was discussed the previous week. Also, um, I believe that some of you wanted to talk about the grader about the, the quiz, the, the quiz one. So um, she's, uh, she, I think she replied on on chat, right? So you can you can send Emma an email uh, if you like. Any other questions? So, um, who solved the fun problem from last class? Did you find the 10 digit number so that first two digits, digits divisible by two, number of made out of first three digits divisible by three and so on? Nobody, nobody thought about it? Oh yeah, good. Yeah, that, that answer is correct. Uh, Amog, uh, how did you find it? Did you write the code, or did you um, uh, did you do it by hand? Oh, yes. So, so you, you you wrote the code. Yes. Very good. So, um, and then of course you know that the answer is unique, right? Right. So, um, uh, good. So now um, then the question, sort of the question, of was it? Right, so the, the remaining question would be, would be to actually prove it, right? So why, uh, so if you apply all the rules of division, divisibility, uh, can, you, can you infer, can you prove it that the, uh, that the answer is unique? So see here, it's divisible by 10, so it should end with zero, right? And then in the middle, of course, we have five, and there are even numbers that uh, well, second, fourth, six in eight places and the rest we have to you have to try right and you need to try various combinations oh yeah like actually so each number each, each, each digit should be used only once right and as you can see in this number it's it's the case right so yeah uh, the problem still remains uh, to prove that the number uh, that the number is unique just out of curiosity how long did the code run uh, amok so when you when when you compile it, how much how much time did your computer did it take your computer to do it? Approximately. Not long, but is it like a minute or like thirty seconds or less? Less than a yeah, like. So I did it, I did it mathematically. It took maybe yeah, maybe like a minute or so. No, of course, they're forcing you to put extra conditions, right? Like, you don't, you don't just scan, you don't scan all 10 to the 10 numbers, right? So uh, if you do that, you will, it will take forever. So the computer will probably not, not do it, right? So 10 to the 10 is a large number, but you can put extra conditions like parity and uh, uh, the fifth number is five, the last number is zero. Okay, good. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, that, that you did the exercise. So now, so last time we talked about uh, vector functions. And so what is a vector function? Uh, it's a function from set of real numbers uh, to uh, three to three dimensional Euclidean space, uh, which assigns a, a variable t, the value of the vector function, or the value of the vector function, which you can here denote as v of t. 
and it consists of triple of scalar functions. It's an order triple. So this way we can represent uh, a vector function as a curve in three dimensions because uh, for, every, for every point on this curve, we can um, assign a vector whose tip is, is, is at the point and whose tail is at the origin. So therefore the tip of the vector would, um, would trace the curve in space. Right, so uh, parametric curve and the vector function, uh, these two notions are synonymous. Um, then we talked about uh, continuity limits, uh, a straight line homotopy, the line segment between two points. Um, we used parameter, parametric curves to find intersection of surfaces um, using parametric equations and just some elimination. Uh, we talked about derivatives. So we define the derivative of the vector function um, in a standard way. So it, it's a limit of difference. Um, uh, like this, right, divided by h, where h is small, and then you send limit, limit when h goes to zero. Then we talked about, we introduced the notion of the unit tangent vector. So it's a vector that is, uh, has unit length, length one, uh, and uh, it's uh, tangential to the curve at a given point, at point t in this case. And we'll look at a couple of examples. So, Derivatives they satisfy derivatives of vector functions satisfy usual properties which are expected, um, but um, the um, uh, since in vector world there are different kind of products we have to specify we need to do we need to do dot product and cross product separately so dot the dot product the rule for the dot product is this right so the derivative of u dot v is equal to u prime v plus u v prime. Um, and the derivative of the cross product is, is, is the same. So we, when here we have to worry about, worry about the, the order, right? So um, the, uh, basically we, we keep the order of u and v in a product, we just move the, the prime sign. Um, so first, first we take a derivative for the first function and then we take a derivative for all the last function. Okay, uh, and finally we talked about integrals and curvature. So yeah, uh, if we talk about integrals uh, and, and uh, the proper length or length of the curve, and we can treat the length of the curve as a parameter here, right? So this S of T, it's integral. Uh, and then uh, once you have this substitution, you can formally uh, substitute T for S, right? Uh, and then the curve will be parameterized by its, by its proper length. And this concept was used in the definition of a curvature. So curvature is an invariant, is a quantity that is invariant under parameterization, under change of variables. So uh, here we define curvature kappa as, absolute, as the absolute value of the derivative of, of the unit tangent vector um, relative to the proper length. So, in terms of this, uh, so in, in the most sort of explicit example of a circle, so circle is a curve that has constant curvature equal to one over the radius of the circle. Um, and you can see here like the sort of what curvature actually shows, right? It shows you by how much the tangent vector, uh, by, by how much the tangent vector changes um, as, you, as you change the proper length, right? So it's basically, so it's dt over ds. Well, what, what is ds? ds is this, say we, we change the length of the curve from here to here, right? And then the tangent vector have changed from here to here, right? So it, it, it's a quantity that measures by how much this thing changed, well, in absolute value uh, as we moved along the curve, right? So the bigger the curvature, the stronger uh, is the turn of this vector, if you wish. Right, so that's why if you have, say, a circle of large radius, say it's like, you know, like this, if you have a, so like say, we live, we live on, you know, on, on the surface of the earth, right, the radius of the curvature of the earth, earth, earth is large. And then of course, it, it, if you do one step, the direction of the tangent vector to the earth does not change much. And right, so and that's, why, that's why curvature is small. 
So you did you know, one step here in the direction of the curvature, the direction of the tangent vector almost did not change. Right, so that's your kind of your DS thing. Right, so uh, whereas if you have a small circle, then the even small change in uh, position of a point changes the orientation of the tangent vector drastically, and that results in a bigger curvature. Yeah. So, um, and of course, in general, we expect that the curvature is a function of, of the parameter, and then Using, using the formula that we have derived about um, the proper arc length as a function of t, where t is your favorite polarization, we have we can you can show that the curvature is equal to this is given by that formula. So you take basically it uh, it's the velocity vector across the second across the well second derivative. We'll talk about acceleration today, so it will be part of that uh, divided by the cube of the absolute value of the of the velocity. Uh, yeah, and finally, we talked about uh, the 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 uh, uh, what happened if you have a plot, which is given by the graph of the function y equals f of x, uh, and then there is a more explicit formula for the curvature as a function of x, because so here you can think of x as a parameter. Okay, so that was yesterday's lecture. Do you have any questions? Okay, so today we'll continue uh, working with the vector functions. And so uh, I was asked to uh, write down where the, at which, so we're, we're still now working in section 13.3 uh, of the book. And uh, we, we talk, well, now let's talk about normal and binormal vectors. So let's uh, do a quick recap. So obviously if you say we have a curve like this, then the uh, the tangent vector vector goes like this. So it's a unit tangent vector t is equal to r prime over r prime absolute value. Um, and the um, so now. So, uh, and then uh, remember that, yes, the, the, this, well, by, by construction, the absolute value of this vector is one, right? It's clear from this formula. Now, we introduce the so-called uh, normal vector. So, so this is tangent vector. Now we introduce normal vector. We know that with n, or n of t, and it's equal to the derivative of the tangent vector, of the unit tangent vector, divided by the absolute value of the derivative of the tangent vector. Now, although the, deriv the, deriv the tangent vector itself, the capital T, has unit length, its derivative does not have to have, does not have a unit length in general. So, um, to make things consistent with, well, to, to, um, it is, it is uh, uh, convenient to normalize it, right? So that's why we divide, um, divide n of t by the, by the length of the derivative of the tangent vector. So uh, remember, we talked about last time that whenever this happens, whenever you have a vector whose, whose, whose length is fixed, then its derivative is orthogonal to this vector. So therefore, uh, the normal vector will be orthogonal to, uh, to the curve. 
Ik doe het niet. Ik ben echt vloggen onder de tent te trekken. Zo, je kunt zien hier dat dit. Ja, zo wil ik het bij de streaming kunnen zeggen. Maar zo, dit is de tangent vector. En finally, er is een third vector, which we call a binormal. Um, which is given by the cross product of tangent vector and the normal vector. So uh, in the picture on the left, it will be it will be pointing downwards. Uh, right, so for example, um, in your book there is a there is an error. So uh, the, the direction of this of this vector is wrong. Right? It's, it's the cross product, you should use the right hand rule than the left hand rule. Uh, yeah. So uh, now we have a, a triple of vectors. All of them have unit length. Let's let's draw them again here. Tangent, normal, and binormal. Right. So they form an orthogonal triple. Which sort of uh, exists at every point of the curve, right? So assuming that the, the curve is smooth and differentiable, um, so this this triple, this um, frame travels together with the point on the curve, and then it will rotate. But what will change, uh, what will not change, uh, is the length of each of those vectors. Uh, yeah, so this is called. Uh, Fresnel triple. So it's uh, T, N, and B. During the discussion, I think we can solve a problem about this Fresnel Fresnel triple. A discussion on Friday. Okay. Well, uh, to, the, to better understand what these guys are, let's take an, let's take an example. So I think the example with with the helix, with the spiral, is quite it's it is rather representative. So helix, we know what it is, right? It has components cosine t, sine t, and t. Right? Uh, derivative is equal to we did this before, but nevertheless. Negative sine t cosine t and one. So tangent vector is equal to well uh, norm. We calculated the norm, right? So r prime norm is equal to square root two. Right. So so the derivative equals the, the tangent vector is equal to one over root two uh, r prime. Which is minus sine t cosine t in one. Um, now to evaluate uh, to find the normal vector, we need to find the absolute value of the tangent of the tangent vector. Oh, sorry, uh, absolute value of absolute value of tangent vector is one. Uh, we need the absolute value of the der derivative of the tangent vector. So now now we calculate the derivative. So that requires certain work. This is one over two minus cosine t minus sine t zero. Um, the absolute value of t prime is equal to one over square root two. And because sine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one, and then there's a one over two. So the normal vector is equal to t prime Or t prime absolute value, and that is uh, well uh, the that thing, right? So you divide by so square square root of two gets cancelled, um, and it's a vector with components negative cosine t, negative sine t, zero. Question: How can someone tell me what says before triple of t? Oh, it's a name. Um, it's it's a French name. 
Well, it's pronounced Fresnel. It's F R E S N E L, and S is silent. I believe I spelled it correctly. Okay, so let me check. Sorry, yeah, the circuit would. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's right, correct. Yes, yeah, so Fresnel, Fresnel table of factors. That's right. Oh, actually, yeah, good point, sorry. Um, I, I, I was wrong, I, I'll take it back. It's called Frenet, yeah, Fre uh, Frenel or something. Well, my spelling is not good in general, especially in the morning. It's a different French name. Frenet, Frenet triples. So if you go, if you open the Wikipedia page, you can see the there's these equations um, in the beginning. So we'll talk about those equations in during the, during the discussion. Right, so there's a system of equations that um, uh, describe the derivatives of each of those three vectors over the proper length over s, and then the right hand side is given by uh, well, some linear combinations of these vectors with coefficients, which are curvature, and this parameter tau, which is called torsion. Uh, so we'll, 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 leave, we'll leave that for the discussion. Yes, thank you. Uh, other questions? Right, so a normal vector is this, um, and the binormal vector B of t, we just need to do the cross product, right? So it's, uh, well, uh, it's a cross product of t times times n. So there will, will be coefficient one over square root of two up front. And then we have i, j, k. Uh, minus sine t, cosine t one, minus cosine t minus sine t zero, and so that gives you what? That gives you one over two. Uh, in i component you have, you have get sine t. J component you have uh, minus cosine, right? Uh, and it's one in the z component. So if you try to draw it, uh, it will look somehow like this. So see the, the normal vector has no a z projection. So although we know that the, so if the particle is moving from bottom to top, the uh, you know, tangent vector uh, does have a z component, right? It has component uh, one, right? So it goes, it goes up. Uh, but the normal vector does not, so it's parallel to the xy plane. Uh, yeah. Um, so right. So and then you can and then the the, the binormal vector, as you can see that it always has uh, has the um, projection uh, on the on the z-axis is always equal to one, right? Um, Is, is wrong for the direction. Why is this one? Let's see. Yeah, that's that's sine squared plus cosine squared. Yeah, so that's one. Mm -hmm. I'm just checking why the. Oh no, so everything fine. Everything fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything. I just got confused about something. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, yes, and and B goes like that, right? So, 
um, but vector b has component uh, has a projection equals to one on the z axis, and it kind of it rotates together with the with the helix, right? So it has uh, it, it has this component. So see, right? So vector n always curves to, uh, towards the center. So in a sense, normal vector shows you the direction in which the curve bends, like where where the curvature goes. Um, well, tangent vector is always tangent, right? And then uh, the binormal vector you just you can find it by uh, you can find it from the uh, from, uh, from the cross product. So clearly, uh, in order to uh, specify positions of all three vectors, it's sufficient to know two of them, right? because they are related by the they they related by the cross product. And these equations, which I showed you in the Wikipedia page, uh, in fact, it will be one of the exercises uh, in the book. So we'll get uh, we will we'll get used to those. Okay, um, questions? Now, a little bit of, 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 of terminology. So the plane, which is formed by, um, by the T and N, this plane, is called the uh, osculating plane. Osculating plane. It comes from, from Latin osculum, it means to kiss, because it sort of, it sort of, it's with this plane kind of kisses the curve, uh, sort of kind of touches it carefully. Um, and the plane formed by uh, N and B vectors this plane is called the normal plane. Right, so uh, you can see that the normal plane is always orthogonal to the tangent vector, right? And osculating plane is always orthogonal to the binormal vector. Um, and anytime, um, so if you draw an, an osculating plane, Right, so here there's always a, so also draw it in orange, it's a plane formed by T and N. Uh, you can uh, inscribe a circle, right, uh, which belongs to this, uh, we could draw, draw a circle which lies inside this osculating plane, which has, this, which has the same tangent uh, as T. Right, so uh, you can draw, so there's a circle here, which belongs to, which sort of uh, the circle, it's called uh, osculating or osculating circle or circle of curvature. Well, the curvature circle So, uh, the circle is defined like this, so it, it, it lies, it, it belongs to the osculating plane. Uh, and uh, has tangent T. And it's radius by uh, by design, right? So, oh, sort of the 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 the, the, the uh, radius of osculating circle um, is equal to one over the curvature at that point. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so it, it, it has, uh, sort of, it, there are many circles which have the same tangent, but it's a circle such that its radius, uh, I'm going to try to draw the fragment of this picture again. Let's say we have, uh, let's say that the curve goes like this, and here it enters through this plane, right, and goes like that, right? So that's the curve, and now you draw the circle, it lies in this plane, so its radius rho, is equal to one over kappa at this point. Excuse me. Uh, 
and it lies uh, and, and, and lies in the circle. Okay. Um, so let's illustrate this by example, an example and find the uh, the, the uh, describe the, uh, the all this normal plane and osculating plane and osculating circle in uh, for this uh, for the spiral at some point. Right, so let's, let's go up a little bit. Need a bit more, right? So now. So, uh, uh, if you remember how we draw, uh, so the normal normal planes are described by um, so if, if you have a plane, uh, uh, so the 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 tangent vector here. Right, so this this is a, there's a, there's vector t, uh, then it's uh, the normal plane is orthogonal to the tangent vector, um, so uh, we can use the coordinates of the tangent vector to write the equation for it. Right, so the so let's say let's say we pick a point p. Uh, no, normal plane at point P, which is given by coordinates uh, 0, 1, and pi half. Uh, and then, then, then the equation for no, normal plane would look like, um, so we evaluated t equals 0, right? So it's, it's, it's minus 1 times x minus 0 uh, plus 0 times y minus 1. Uh, so, uh, if, if you evaluate, if you put uh, uh, t equals pi half, right, so into plug in here, t equals pi over 2, right, so then sine will, sine will be equal to minus 1, uh, cosine is equal to 0, right, and then um, we write in the equation that passes to point 0, 1, and pi half. Right, and then plus one times z minus pi half is equal to zero. Or you can rewrite it as uh, z is equal to x plus pi half. Right. Right, so that's that's the normal plane, uh, and the oscillating plane. Uh, is orthogonal to b. Where is minus one coming from? The it's sine. It's minus sine of pi half. So remember, equation for the plane looks like this, right? You have some. You have you know a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero equals zero. So it's the plane that passes through point P with coordinates x0, y0, z0, which is orthogonal to north to vector with components A, B, and C. Okay. And the oscillating plane is, is, uh, is orthogonal to vector B. And it's vector B at t equals point half has coordinates and look over here. And it's equal to 1 over 2, 1, 0, 1. So the equation would look like this, right? It's <clears throat> 1 over root 2 is a common factor, so we can cancel it, it doesn't matter. And so the equation would look like 1 x minus 0 plus 0, 1 minus 1 plus 1 z minus pi half equals to zero, or uh, you can write it as 
z is equal to minus x plus y half. So that gives you that gives you the <coughs> equation for the oscillating plane. And finally, let's do an exercise exercise with the oscillating circle. So um, let's draw a parabola. like that um, and then sort of, uh, let's sort of study its curvature at the origin right so we have y equals x squared and this is the oscillating circle uh, with the radius which is equal to the curvature uh, at that point Right, so uh, uh, remember we need to find the curvature of the parabola. So for that, we need to uh, remember the equation for when you have when you have a graph that is when you have a graph of a function which is equal by y equals f of x. Right, the curvature as a function of x uh, is given by this formula here, which is f double prime of x absolute value over one plus f prime of x squared to the power three halves right which in this example will be equal to two over one plus x um, uh, plus two x four x squared right so the derivative is two x and you take you, you take a square of it plus 4x squared to the power of 3 halves. Uh, and if you evaluate this at uh, x equals zero, you'll get two. So therefore, uh, by construction, the oscillating circle should have radius one half. So this, uh, this point has coordinate one half. So the oscillating circle is described by equation x squared plus y minus one half squared is equal to one quarter. That's the equation. Okay. Questions? Now, I think for, for the rest of today's lecture, we're going to talk about applications. Um, so we'll talk about physics, uh, well, the mechanical applications, right? So Mechanics, like uh, classical mechanics, should be distinguished into like its own its own realm, right? It's a science on its own. When I say physics, we actually mean quantum physics. Uh, anyhow, so the uh, let's talk about uh, velocities and accelerations, and then towards the end, I want to show you how to derive the Kepler's laws of motion of planets or any point like masses in gravitational field. And go on top of the page. So that's a paragraph, what it's subsection 13.4 in the book. Um, it's a uh, motion in space, velocities and accelerations. So, of course, uh, you, 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 you know most of that. What I'm going to say in, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to be uh, rather brief. Now, choose T, the parameter that sort of describes our curves as sort of physical time that elapsed from the beginning of experiment to the end, right? It can be infinite. Um, uh, and then, so R of T, it will be the position it's a vector function that descri describes position 
of a point particle in space. Uh, and yeah, so that's actually like, you know, you throw a ball or anything or a projectile or the rocket ship is flying, anything that you like. If something goes on here uh, and uh, so that's R of T. And of course, now we know that the velocity is the derivative. So the V of T, which is the derivative of this function R of T is the velocity. Right, then um, it <clears throat> goes over the tangent. It's tangent to the, to, to, to the trajectory of the particle. Its absolute value is called speed. Let's, call, let's use curly V. So curly V of T is absolute value of V of T. It's speed. Um, so you know that's why when you drive a car, your thing thing is called speedometer, not velocityometer, is because it only measure, measures the the absolute value of the, the the absolute value of the speed, the absolute value of the velocity. Uh, and, and also, uh, it, yeah, so it, sh it shows rate of change of the coordinate, and then you can also write it as, uh, so the, the, the absolute value, sorry, the, this, this V here is, you can also write it as the ds over dt, right, where s is the arc length of the, traje of, of, of the trajectory, okay? Now, and finally, the acceleration, so it's a of t, it's the derivative of the velocity vector, or it's the second derivative of the position vector. So we already know that uh, when you take derivatives of vectors, that its direction might change uh, uh, dr dr drastically. So we're going to talk about how this works for, for the acceleration. So let's say it's, it's directed somewhere here. So I assume from physics course that you're familiar, you know that um, well, uh, that acceleration can be tangential and normal, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Right. So, uh, let's see what happens, for example, in this, uh, uh, what happens if you throw a rock, that's the standard school problem, right, if there's a, two-dimensional projection, right, you throw a rock at an angle, at an angle alpha with initial velocity v0 uh, to the horizon. Um, so, no, no, not frena, <laughs> not frena, frena, uh, okay, so, well, not yet. So, um, v of t will, of course, goes along the tangent line uh, excuse me, tangent vector, so that will be parallel to t. Uh, acceleration will have two components, right? It will have the component along the tangent, the tangential acceleration, and the normal acceleration. So the normal component of, of the acceleration will be related, will be parallel to the normal vector. Yeah. So, right, so like the, there will be a formula that relate, that sort of, that uh, expands acceleration vector as the normal component and the, uh, and the tangential component. Yeah, so, and of course, you know, either from physics or from experience that if you throw something, well, un unless you throw it really fast enough, right, um, it will fall, it will eventually fall down. So, we know that this is parabola, right, so the, um, uh, well, maybe we can talk, we can talk about the, 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 uh, right away, so the, um, the, Let's see, do I, do I want to say it now? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I can, I can, I can say it now, right? So um, then sort of the, the, the only physics ingredient which we'll need for today's lecture is the Newton's second law of motion, Newton's law of motion.
second. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're good. Yes, hello. Which, uh, what, what does it say? Who knows what's the second, what's the second law of motion set? Force is proportional to, well, it's actually that, uh, yes, equals at, at MA, right, right, right. right. Um, so I know uh, if you took a uh, part in physics and interest, so you, here in US, when the first 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 round of physics Olympiads is called F equals F equals MA test. Right? So uh, yeah, and then there's a so Alex Jensen's dp over dt, right? So it's the derivative of the momentum over time. Yeah, I agree. Um, so the uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about momentum towards the Kepler's cap, the laws, but like for now, I just say that the force uh, that's uh, is exerted on the on the body is equal to the mass of this body times the acceleration. Right? So the so if we have a point, we have, okay, if we have a particle here, um, propagate in space, then the and then so and, and so S is, so yes, F is the force. Right. Um, which um, sort of it's the external um, substance. It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a external effort which is applied to the body, which changes its acceleration, right? And the extent to which this acceleration changed is uh, is equal to the, the force divided by the, the the mass of the body, right? So the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the force, um, and uh, the so by force, we should mean the total, the net sum of all forces, right? So if you have a bunch of forces, then you need to take a vector sum of them. So if, we, if there's a projectile that sort of travels in the, in the field of gravity, right, there's only one, and if you neglect the resistance of the air, see if we're doing it in vacuum, the only force is the gravitational force, which is this case is equal to, it's also proportional to, uh, to the mass, Right the, to the mass of the um, uh, of the body. So here, the acceleration uh, ac acceleration of the acceleration is equal to uh, the the free fall acceleration, which is g in Earth is about thirty feet per second squared, right? Or it's about uh, ten meters per second squared, right? So the acceleration here is equal to with constant value, constant value g, and it's it's, it's directed downwards, so it has components zero, zero. Let's say it's minus g, where, where the g, g itself is positive. Okay. Um, and now let's uh, let's find the, let's find the trajectory by integration. So you you can dial back all this formula here. Right, so to get the position, uh, we need to so first from to get velocity, we need to integrate acceleration. We know how to integrate vector functions. Right, so v of t is equal to integral a of t dt, and then let's say we're doing it from. Uh, so it's an indefinite integral, but we want to do we want to do definite integral from so from zero to. Uh, well, let's change the integration variable here. Let's call it no, uh, y. Well, y is not good. Uh, so tau, right? Uh, for, for, from zero to t, right? So that will give you. Um, so it's this integral of this vector function, um, zero, zero, uh, and then. Uh, and, and then you get uh, minus g times t, right? Uh, plus, I'm sorry, sorry. sorry uh, yeah, so uh, like this, right? So uh, how should I do it? 
plus plus the uh, initial vector at point uh, at, at, at t equals zero, right? So plus plus v zero. So let's say that this v zero has components here. Uh, well, actually, I don't need I don't need three coordinates. I don't need two co three coordinates. I only need two coordinates, right? So we have x and y. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, need x and y. So it's two dimensions is enough. So therefore, here we also need uh, only x and y. So v, v zero has components v zero times cosine alpha, right? Then v zero times sine alpha. Okay, and here, so when we integrate, uh, right, so the antiderivative is equal to, uh, that is, Actually, yeah, let's say uh, plus should 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 it be should, should have been like this, right? This integral uh, plus v zero of t, and uh, so plus 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 v zero. It's like the uh, let, let me actually write it a bit differently. Uh, so sorry, let's mess. Let, let, let's just do it. Uh, um, let, let me write it as an indefinite integral, and then we we'll just add a uh, we we'll just add a we we'll just add an, a, add an integration constant, right? So. Um, so the, the meaning of this integration constant is the value of the velocity at t equals zero, which is which is v zero, right? So then the answer will be equal to uh, zero minus g t. This comes from the integral, and then plus uh, v v zero v zero times cosine alpha v zero times sine alpha. So if you do it. Um, and combine this together. So the, the x component will be v0 cosine alpha, and the uh, y component v0 sine alpha minus gt. Okay. So that's the uh, parametric description of, of the velocity, which is a linear function, right? So it's a, uh, it's a line. Right, and then finally to find the position, we need to integrate velocity. Uh, and then we need to add the initial position uh, as an integration constant. Well, so uh, initial position here is zero, zero. So R, R naught is zero, zero. So we just need to integrate, uh, integrate what we have here. So the X component will be V zero cosine alpha times t, right? And inter integral here will be v0 sine alpha times t minus gt squared over two. Does it say, what does it say after v0 uh, above r of t? Uh, sine alpha minus gt as a cosine uh, so what it's v0 cosine alpha comma v0 sine alpha minus gt what was the point of tau oh yeah at first i need to write the, the the indefinite integral definite integral but then i decided to write the indefinite integral it's so you can put uh, like that yeah. sure Yeah, so that's that's the that's the coordinates of the uh, of of the of, of the radius vector, and then well, the uh, let's see what uh, yeah, so we, we we can rewrite it as so x of t is equal to v zero 
cosine alpha times t, y of t is equal to v0 sine alpha times t minus gt squared over 2. Uh, and yeah, so we know that this is a uh, this is a parabola, right? Because uh, we can uh, we can write it as, um, as as follows. We can say so x squared, right, is equal to uh, so. Right, so we need to get rid of. Uh, we want to try to we want to try to solve it. Solve. Uh, um, but we need to try to find the equation equation for this problem. Yeah, so why did you end up in the gradient with the initial conditions for the one and position? Well, I mean, uh, so the, the way this works, you can uh, so you do you do an you do an integral, right? Um, and then if it's an indefinite integral, there's integration constant, right? And then to find the integration constant, you need to um, so the the, the the meaning of the integration constant is that the it gives you the 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 value of the Let's say of velocity at t equals to zero, right? Um, so the the yeah, this, this is the same with the same with the position. Okay, so and then before the break, let's uh, write the equation for this parabola here. Uh, so it would look like what we need, we need to get rid of t here. So from the first equation, we can solve t is equal to x over v0 cosine alpha and plug it into the second equation, which will give us y equals v0 sine alpha x divided by v0 cosine alpha. It goes down, so we can move it up. Um, a minus g half x squared over v0 squared cosine squared alpha, which gives us, we can cancel that here, since y is equal to x sine alpha plus x, well, g over 2 v0 squared cosine squared alpha x squared. Oh, there's, a, there's a tangent alpha here. I'm sorry, there's a tangent alpha. Right, so that's the, that, that's the equation of the parabola. Uh, so it, indeed, indeed it looks like, so there's a, ne there's a negative coefficient in front of x squared uh, and it's shifted to the right, right? So, uh, so you can, uh, the parabola that goes like that. Uh, so if you want, you could find the where the where the center of the parabola is by uh, complete completing the square. Yeah, so let me not uh, let me not do that. Okay, so let's uh, make a quick uh, break, and after the break, we'll talk about Kepler's law. Well, Kepler's laws of motion. Actually, before the, before that, we'll talk about uh, uh, tangential and normal components of accelerations, and then about Kepler's laws of motion. Okay, I'll, I'll see, you, see you in a couple of minutes. Maybe let's get in at 11, uh, 13, 15, something like that.
Okay, um, I'm back. Question from Jay Lee. Uh, Lee, is there? Yes. Yeah, so the first homework, which is which I uploaded, was wrong. If it's still on Canvas, okay, I'll let me delete it right away. So there's the homework, obviously, on section 13. Um, I must have. So yeah. So let me, let, let me do it right away. I'm going to delete it from files. Yes, so that, this is the wrong one. I'm going to delete it. Done, it's no longer there. So all homework assignments are now in file um, in the uh, in the folder homework. Sure. Okay. Right. And then of course for um, so yeah, we derive the equation uh, the the position function of the of the motion of a projectile in in the field of of of, of, of constant gravity. Of course, you may have you may know some formula about how to find length of how far it will fly and the height, etc. All of this you can easily find from here, right? So once you can integrate, you really open a lot of uh, possibilities for yourself. Okay, uh, now let's talk about acceleration. So remember, um, I told you that acceleration should, should is not always orthogonal or tangential to. Uh, to, 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 to the trajectory. So of course, when you're driving in a, on a, in a car in a straight line and you accelerate, your velocity is forward and your acceleration is also directed forward. But it's not always the case. So, um, so acceleration. So uh, we, we, we discussed that it's a derivative of the velocity vector. Um, now, the let's try to. Uh, so, we, what we want to do is to. So, if, if there's a trajectory on which the particle is moving, let's see here. That's the. Uh, so, this is the tangent vector, and this is the normal vector. Uh, and acceleration is directed somewhere here. So, we want to find the. A formula which will allow us to present it as the sum of the uh, tangential part, which we'll call AT, and the, the normal part, which is called AN. So we want to, to find this function. So we want to say that uh, A is equal to some, some function you know, F1 of T times T plus F2 of T. Times N, where F1 and F2 are some functions which you want to, uh, which you want to find. So um, let's recall the definition of the tangent vector. So tangent vector is the derivative of a radius vector or the position vector over its absolute value, which using the notations from the above from the slide above, we can write as the velocity vector divided by the speed. Of course, we can multiply by speed, and we can say that the velocity vector, which we use therefore to calculate the acceleration, is speed multiplied by the tangent vector. Right, um, and now let's let's differentiate this equation. We different differentiate. Uh, so v prime which is equal to scalar v prime times t plus uh, scalar v times t prime. Okay, so what else do we know about uh, these quantities? Uh, remember that the curvature 
kappa equals absolute value of t prime divided by absolute value of r prime. Remember, kappa was defined as derivative of the tangent vector over the arc length, which we, by chain rule we can rewrite um, the way that I did. And again, using the notation for speed, we can write it as, as this. So therefore, the absolute value of t prime is equal to uh, is equal to kappa times v times the times times the speed. Now, um, the normal. Uh, so, how, how do we approach the normal vector? So remember, so since the tangent vector has unit length, its derivative is is orthogonal to it, right? So it's so the normal vector, we define it as t prime over t prime absolute value. So again, let's solve, let's solve it for t prime. So therefore, t prime is equal to n times absolute value of t prime. And the latter is equal to, from the formula above, so we can write it as kappa uh, uh, v N. Okay, so that's that's the that's the that's the vector t prime, and can, we can now finally substitute it here. So uh, a the velocity the derivative of the velocity is the acceleration, so that's equal to uh, v prime times t. So that will be the tangential uh, component of the acceleration, and then plus. And then t prime, it's kappa times v, and there's another v here, so it's kappa v squared times n. And so this we're going to call a t, and this we're going to call a n. So this is the uh, tangential. Acceleration. And this is the normal, uh, normal acceleration, the normal component. Yeah. So these are vectors, and of course, the, the scalar value, so at, well, absolute value, is equal to v prime, so it's derivative of the speed, uh, and the Normal is equal to kappa times v squared. Okay. Right. So um, let's look at an example. So, of course, if you have, um, if if the point particle is moving along a circle. So say there's a, its velocity is a function of time, right? Then um, there will be two components of the acceleration, right? So uh, let's uh, let, 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 let's let, let's write like this. So let's say r is equal to uh, let's uh, let's say it goes like this. It's the uh, Cosine of a of t. Oh, no, a is the a is a bad name. So say um, cosine of f of t. Right. So that the uh, cosine of f of t sine f of t, where f is some function. Right. So the the point is not moving with constant velocity. Along the, along the circle, rather, there's some change of uh, there's some change of velocity, right? So then a prime is equal to which is the velocity, right? It's equal to um, minus sine of f of t times f prime of t, and uh, cosine of f of t 
times f prime of t. And then the acceleration will have several components, right? So it's, it's minus cosine f of t f prime squared uh, minus sine f of t. Well, I should skip t, but okay. Uh, times f double prime and analogous with the with the y component. So it's minus sine Yeah, so it's minus sign uh, f of t f prime squared uh, plus cosine f of t of double prime. And so there'll be two, one of the 13 axis exercises. Is that? Um, you mean it's it's one of the one, one, one of the homework problems I'm doing here, or what? Um, Emma, what's uh, what what you're saying? Okay, so that's the, that's, the, that's the acceleration. And now let's see how it decomposes into the normal and into the, uh, the tangential acceleration. So the velocity here, so V, right, which is absolute value of R prime, right, it's equal to uh, F prime of T. Right, because uh, that's what the uh, well. If you just calculate, you're going to get you're going to get a prime, um, and the the curvature. So now now we need to we need to we need to calculate the curvature, but um, well, we know that the curvature in this case is. Uh, Uh, yes, so the curvature here is equal to one, right? Because it's 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 one of the radius of the circle, um, and uh, we we'll, we we'll calculated yeah we we'll calculated the, the the curvature of the circle, right? So now so if v is equal to f prime, then v prime is equal to f double prime, and you can see from the formula above, right? So they can, you can easily write this. So you can write that this acceleration is equal to. Uh, F prime times the tangent vector, which in this case is minus cosine F of T uh, no no uh, just minus minus sine F of T, excuse me, minus sine, it's the second component, right? So it's minus sine F of T cosine, yeah, so cosine F of T. T. Oh, sorry. So the, the, the tangent vector is minus sine and cosine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cosine f of t multiplied by f double prime, right? So it's, it's this part here. So this and and that 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 gives you the tangential acceleration, right? It's the second derivative of this function, right? Um, and the the normal acceleration will be equal to f prime squared, right, uh, times uh, times the normal vector minus cosine f of t uh, minus sine f of t. So this, yes, I'm, I'm deliberately giving an example which is not in the book, so you have some you know something else to think about it. Right, so this is the tangent vector, and this is the normal vector. And so this is uh, 
v prime, and this is v squared. So it's v squared times kappa. Uh, kappa in this case is equal to, to one. Questions? Uh, so it, it's really something that, you know, uh, so say you are uh, exiting the highway or, or entering the highway and then you're going on the ramp, right? And then, so it's, so let's approximate ramp as a part of it, as the arc of a circle. So as you move in along the circle, you're accelerating or decelerating tangentially, right? So that will be, that's this first contribution. And you also ex ex uh, exhibit the normal acceleration, right? So normal acceleration from here is the normal vector goes here. So that's a n, and tangen tangential acceleration goes al along the velocity, right? So that's a t, and the vector sum of these two quantities will be will be the acceleration itself. And so, um, if you are moving at constant velocity. Oops, Uh, let's, let's, let's get back to the formula. So here, the normal acceleration. So an, if you so since an is equal to kappa v squared. So if you're moving at a circle on a circle of radius r uh, with constant velocity or with constant speed, rather, because it's, um, velocity is not constant. Uh, then it's equal, and we know that the curvature of the radius of the circle of radius r is equal to one over r, and then this, then the normal acceleration will be equal to v squared over r. I think the formula that we probably know from from physics. Just uh, in this example, the radius was equal to one. I think I have questions. Now, the, um, it will help us to, uh, for the future calculations, to derive uh, one more for, uh, some, some explicit formulae for tangent and normal components of the acceleration, uh, explicitly for, which sort of explicitly uses parametrization. Right? So um, consider the following, sort of, uh, let's derive more explicit formulae. So if you take the velocity v and dot it with the a, right, um, then the, um, so we know that a has, so v is the speed times the tangent vector dot with the a, and a has two components, right? So there is a tangential component and there's a normal component. Let's calculate this uh, dot product, right? So t is a, t is a unit vector, so we're going to get v times v prime, um, and then here we'll get uh, kappa v squared t dot n. What is t dot n equal to? What is this thing? What's the zero, right? Because they're orthogonal to each other, right? So this is zero. So every so v dot a is equal to v dot uh, v prime. Okay, so that allows us to calculate to, to find the formula for the tangential acceleration. So a t, which is the derivative of the velocity, you can you get it from this formula. So it's v dot a divided by, by the velocity. Um, and what is V that, so what is V? V is R prime and A is R double prime. 
and then we dot them, and the velocity is r prime absolute value. So um, you can have you can have your curve, you can pick a curve, you can you know take your favorite parameterization, um, and so r of t, and then you can calculate explicitly the tangential uh, acceleration. Okay, and uh, similarly, we can get normal acceleration. So normal is kappa times v squared, curvature times speed squared. And again, we just put, uh, so yes, yeah, so the, the formula for the curvature, we know what it is, right? It's r dot cross, so r prime, excuse me, cross r double prime, that divides r prime cubed. But then we multiply by the uh, square of velocity that, that gives you r prime squared. So we can simplify and say that that gives you r prime cross r double prime absolute value divided by r prime absolute value. So uh, in th this way, it's easy to remember, right? So the tangential, acceler the tangential acceleration in order to find the tangential acceleration, you, you do the dot product of velocity and, and, and acceleration and then divide it by the speed. To find the normal, normal component, you do the absolute value of the cross product and then you divide by the speed. So one is dot product, one is cross product. Kind of, um, interestingly, these two vector multiplications, they appear independently in tangential and normal components of the acceleration. Okay. Good. Uh, so yeah, so the, the, there are some examples uh, in uh, in the book, and then the there will be some exercises exercises in the homework. Okay. Okay. Now we have a little bit of time, so we can talk about it's my, one of my favorite topics. Uh, uh, Kepler's Kepler's laws of motion of planetary motion. Of course, uh, you probably know the story that in in science things are almost never named after their discoverers, right? Of course, these laws were not discovered when Kepler knew them this laws by some observations, but they were derived by Newton, right, in, in, in his famous book in Principia. Actually, so uh, fun thing is that uh, in the book, so I'm going to give it the, the duration, which is, uh, well, I mean, it's close to some to the duration that Newton knew, but in the book, in, the, in this Principia Mathematica, mm -hmm. Newton used a different derivation, which does not rely on any calculus, on any vector analysis, anything. It was just from pure thought. So just from the fact that the f equals ma and that the, uh, the law of gravitation, that the force is inversely, inversely proportional to the square of the distance to the object, it's possible to, uh, to, to deduce that uh, the trajectories are ellipses, or if it's if, if it's a finite motion, it's kind of you can you can you can find that the, the trajectories are ellipses. I can put you the link um, in the uh, in the B forces. There's a nice uh, YouTube video that describes that. Uh, it's also described in one of the Feynman's lectures. Um, now the fun thing is so again, so if you're interested in this kind of his, history stuff. The, if you look at planets from Earth, right? So say you don't know much about the solar system, you just look at uh, the trajectory of say Venus or Mars uh, in the sky, right? So how does it look like, right? So typically it would look like this, right? So there will be this, those curves. Um, well, because you know, if you do, if you look at uh, let's say Sun is here, Earth is here, and Mars is. If Mars is there, and then sort of the, depending on the angle with which the planets are. So, uh, or, so first of all, orbits are not not perfectly aligned. So sort of they're off a little bit, right? So sometimes, uh, depending on the position of the orbit, sometimes the, the planets move in in one direction, and then uh, sometimes there is a uh, uh, what is called 
retrograde the motion, and then it would uh, and then then it would turn back again. Uh, so and back in the day, people were able just by looking at those kind of trajectories uh, actually understand that uh, so not only planets must orbit in ellipses, but also that uh, that the what's called the third law of motion that the square of the periods of uh, rotation of those planets are proportional to uh, cubes of their major semi-axis. So that was done just from pure observation. In fact, although in modern textbooks this is called the third law, third Kepler's law, historically it was the first. Uh, yeah, because what people did to just, uh, so, you know, do you know how how people back in the day measure distances to objects in the universe? How what's the what's the most reliable way to do that? Um, so you probably heard about the parallax. Check the spelling. It's with X, it's parallax. Right. Um, the uh, what it, what is, par is parallax is basically basically the uh, you know so you need to know that the, the the planet orbits the sun right say in the summer we're here say uh, summer and in winter we are here so if by some means you know the distance between Earth and the Sun, so you know the base. You can use it, you, you can use it to measure distances to objects in the sky. So say there's some object here, a star or a planet, so you measure its position in the sky in the summer, and then you measure its position in the, in, in the winter. Um, and so if you do it at the same time of the day, you look at the same portion of the sky and you measure by how much, right, this object had, this object had moved. So say, in winter, it was moving like this, and in summer, it was moving like that. Um, and that distance can give you information about how, how far, about how far the, the, the object is. And right? so, um, and that's where this, this names come from, like par sec, right? So uh, it means that, so par sec is the distance at which the parallax, so this is called parallax, it's the, shift the change of, of the position so it's the change of the position of the object in the sky in terms of uh, in terms of degrees by how many degrees so if if the if the if this angle is one second one one arc second then we say that the the, the, the this object is one parsec away right so parsec is a very large distance it's something like around like a year or something like that so was it parsec I always forget. Uh, yeah, so parsec is uh, 3.3 light years. Yeah, so that's 31 trillion kilometers. Yeah. yeah, so parallax is not in chapter 13 in the book. Yeah, sort of. Uh, oh, additional info right, right not being tested. No, no, no sort of. Um, I'm just giving you the, you know, the, the, the fun part of prehistory. Yeah, so that's how you can me measure distances, right? So. People back in the day in 16th century, more or less, right? Uh, and this is 17th century. They were able to measure those distances really well. They measured the periods of rotation and uh, they concluded first that this is true. So um, the, the, the time it takes for the planet to go around the sun squared is proportional to the cube of the distance. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and so that was first, and then 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 folks deduced that uh, we, that we have that we have an ellipse. A season and O two. Well, I mean, 
well, yes, that, that, well, that you need to know, right? So you need to have some basic knowledge about what happens with Earth, right? So, of course, if you still think that Earth is the center of the universe and everything revolves around it, you're not going to make any progress. But, uh, uh, yeah, so step one is to realize that Earth rotates around the sun, right? And, uh, well, that the season, season changes is uh, related to, uh, well, the fact that, uh, you know, Earth axis is inclined, and in the summer, so if you live in the northern hemisphere, right, so for us, summer is, you know, well, now, right, so we are more exposed to the sun during the day than during, than, than uh, we have more daily hours than night hours, and that in winter, it's the opposite, right, and say, in, 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 in Australia, it's the other way around, right, so you know that, uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, you, need to, you need to be able to measure, to measure, measure the distance, to the sun by some other methods, uh, and once you know that, you can you can measure distances to high, to other planets as well. But you, of course, you can understand like oh, this. Uh, if you go really far enough, then this thing becomes really really small, right? So uh, it's impossible to measure distances from some very very far objects like uh, other galaxies or something like that. So their parallax will be tiny. Uh, astron to do that, astronomers use what is called Redshift. It's something that it's it's the shift of spectral lines in the emission of the. Um, so when you when you see that like say the source uh, radiates uh, you know let's say visible light and then um, by the by how much it shifts you can tell how far is it away and then by how far is it away you can know excuse me you can tell how fast is it moving and by 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 this by the rate of this this motion, so by, by the speed of motion, you can deduce how far it is. Right? But then, but that also that also implies that uh, you know how how you know how the universe expands or contracts. So it's a whole complicated story. In fact, it's not not not, not fully settled. So till this day, people still debate uh, what is the value, what is the rate of the expansion of the universe. Uh, there there's some inconsistencies there. So my physics colleagues talk about it a lot. Okay, so now, now let's uh, let's just derive it. We, not, we now live in twenty first century. Then, um, well, of course, we can just do everything by hand, uh, or, or so we thought with this acceleration of the universe. Actually, yeah. Well, I forgot. Maybe I can give you this video. It's called the Lost Feynman's Lecture, and I encourage you all to to watch it. Advertisement, yeah, so. I'll, I'll put the link in the, uh, in, in, in the courses. Okay. So um, what we need to know is that the, uh, well, the, the two equations, the first one we already talked about, so F equals MA. Uh, and second is that um, the, the, law, the law of gravitation right, it says that the, um, the force as a vector, right, is equal to negative gn uh, mass of the sun times mass of the planet divided by r squared, and then there's a unit unit vector in the direction of of, of the planet. So here, well, let's make a new picture. Okay, so let's pretend we we know already that this this is going to be an, an ellipse. Right, so the uh, yeah, so that's where this vector. There's a planet of mass little m. The this is the well, central object with mass capital M, and the Newton is a gravitational constant, right? It's a 
I don't remember its value, but uh, usually in calculations, people put it to one in some units. You can always normalize it, right? Um, so therefore, uh, a, a planet, um, you know, well, like an object that in, in, in orbit always exerts um, the force that is directed towards the center uh, and, uh, and this body exhibits acceleration, which is equal to negative g newton m over r cubed r. That's negative because it is directed towards towards the uh, the center. So uh, now we're going to do the same exercise as we did before with with the parabola. So we, we're given an acceleration. Now we need to integrate these equations of motion, right? So um, so yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, so um, so Cameron is asking, is it going to be on the test? The answer is no, it's not going to be on the test. Uh, the only calculations I'm going to do now, there, there's nothing fancy about them. Um, so, in, but yeah, so this is not going to be on the test. Um, yeah, so our task is to understand what this blue curve is, right? Okay, so the first thing that we, know, that we need to find uh, is that we need to show that the what well, in physics terms that the angular momentum uh, is conserved in this case, right? So uh, the definition of the angular momentum, you probably know it, right? So let's call it H um, is, the, is, the, is the cross product of the, of the radius vector times the momentum P Actually, let me use, use a different letter. Let's say, let's say L is R dot P. Uh, and I think some of you mentioned dP over dt as the, as the second Newton law. P is the momentum, right? So it's the product of the mass times, uh, times, the, times the velocity. And then as if let's just, uh, we don't need the mass, so it's M times R dot V across V. And uh, let's call this quantity H. Right, so it's the uh, angular momentum per unit mass. And the reason why it's conserved, we can just check it, right? So d over dt, the, the time derivative, is like conser conserved means that it does not change with time, right? So the time of the, the, the this derivative is equal to zero. So we use one of those products, product rules for the cross product. Right, uh, and uh, well, so R prime is V, right? V prime is V prime is A, acceleration. Um, so we just talked about it. Acceleration is directed towards the center. So acceleration is parallel to radius vector. This is zero. Velocity is V cross V is also zero because it's the same vector. So it vanishes, it's equal to zero. So therefore, this h is, a, h is constant. So r cross v is equal to h is a constant vector. So again, in modern books terminology, this fact is called the, the second uh, Kepler's law. So its manifestation will be that uh, the if, if you calculate areas uh, which are uh, smeared by the by the radius vector at equal times, then uh, they'll be the same. So the so this this green areas. So if if, if the planet travels time t from here to here, and time t from here to here, well, you can show that the uh, uh, this, this, this areas will be the same. Uh, it, it's a simple exercise, but we can leave it for the, uh, for the, for the, for, for the discussion. Okay, so H is constant. Now the, but uh, let's, let's use this fact for later. So we know that H is equal to R cross V. Um, so it's R cross R prime. And uh, 
So let, let's denote let's denote the unit vector in the direction of R. Let's denote it with U. Uh, so it's an R scalar without a vector is just the length. It's just the distance from sun, from the sun to the planet. So it's R U cross uh, R U prime, right? Um, now we need to expand it. So it's R U. So you you use the unit vector. So R U dot across R prime. So it's the the, the derivative of the distance from the sun to the planet plus R plus R U prime. Okay. So if you keep going, we'll get R R prime. So use the unit vector. So the uh, yes, R prime U cross U, which is zero, obviously, right? And then plus R squared U cross U prime. This is gone. So we can say that H is equal to R squared U cross U prime. Okay, now next step, let's take the cross product. A cross H and uh, the so acceleration is equal to negative G Newton mass of the sun over R squared times U, right? It's the U is the unit vector and then we cross it with H which is equal to R squared times u cross u prime. So R squared can get canceled, so it's negative G Newton m uh, multiplied by the double vector product. So double cross product like this. So do you remember we had a rule about it? We didn't prove it, but uh, the there's a formula that, that replaces this double uh, double cross product, which we call the formula back minus cap, right? Uh, and that gives us first minus g n m. So uh, if it's if you, if you formally call it a b and c, so that's equal to so a cross b cross c is equal to b a c minus c uh, a b. So that reads u uh, times the dot product of u and u prime minus u prime times dot product u with u. Okay, what is this? What is this thing equal to? Remember, we talked about it, zero, uh, because the u is a unit vector, it derivative is orthogonal to it, so this is zero. So therefore, the thing equals to plus g Newton times mass um, times u prime, right? And u times u is equal to one, because it's a unit vector, so this is equal to one. Okay, and now, now we can integrate this equation. And so the, so remember, uh, let, 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 let's write it again. So, so we have everything in one spot. So A cross H is equal to G Newton M U prime. And we integrate. Well, that's how we do the, the uh, that's how we solve, solve equations of motion. Uh, uh, so that the uh, integral of the acceleration is this velocity, so it's v cross h, h is a constant, right, and is equal to g m u plus a constant, where, where, where c is the constant of, constant of integration. Okay. Um, so now uh, the, there's still one more step to extract the actual equation for the ellipse or for the for the hyperbola from here, and I believe we're out of time. So 
Um, I think we can uh, discuss it on uh, tomorrow in the beginning. And uh, yeah, so you can also read the derivation in the book and watch the video that I sent you. So uh, to be continued, we'll, we'll continue tomorrow. There's not enough time now. And then tomorrow we'll also have, I'll answer questions uh, about, the, about the quiz. Uh, if you have if, if you have any questions, oh, we're sorry, so I'll take it back now. So tomorrow is Wednesday, yeah. It is okay. So to, to, tomorrow, and, and we'll have office hours. Um, I will announce them on on, on B courses. So there'll be you can you can talk to me during the lecture, and then there will be another window uh, in the afternoon where you can do office hours. Quiz on Thursday, yes. Good, all, right, so all, all quizzes will be on Thursdays. Great, that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.